So, you want to hit level 60 with the most amount of gold possible, or maybe you just got bored of doing quests in Plaguelands of Winter Spring, and you're looking for a place to grind out the final stretch to max level, and you want to farm some gold while doing it, I've actually done some testing on the subject, and while questing from level 15 to level 60, I average 4 hours per level, and while grinding mobs I average 5.5 hours per level. So while questing at max efficiency is faster, grinding will give you a lot more gold and it requires a lot less brain power and effort and it's much safer. Instead of having to kill elites, named mobs or loot difficult to find objects, you can find a grinding location and just mindlessly grind mobs over and over and over and get a lot of gold while pushing yourself closer to the end goal of hitting level 60. So, today we're covering how to level from 50 to 60 while effectively making gold at the same time. For the purpose of that, we are focusing on a lot of locations, where to find where you can grind experience by killing mobs while combining that with gold farming, by killing mobs that drop lucrative items, but we will also touch base on professions. So, well, let's get into it. First off, you have Ungoro Crater. Ungoro Crater is a location most of you will go to twice in this level bracket, probably at level 51 and level 54. This is a great place to make gold in this level bracket, let's cover it step by step. First you have various items found all throughout Ungoro like the power crystals and Ungoro soil, all of which are worth gathering and selling to other players for gold. Then you have the living place, the fire elementals around the volcano, in the middle of Ungoro, now these are incredible to farm for elemental fire, they spawn pretty quickly, and there's a bunch of them available over here as well. And then you have Devil Swords. This one is a little bit more risky. If you know, you know. Devil Swords are elites, and they hit pretty hard, but many classes can actually solo them quite easily. By having skinning, you can skin them for Devil Sword Leather, which is used in crafting Devil Sword Gauntlets, and Devil Sword Leggings, which is pre raid best in slot for a lot of classes, creating a massive demand for Devil Sword Leathers and the actual items crafted from the Devil Sword Leathers in an early launch environment where people want to gear up their characters before entering raids. Now for the purpose of Devil Sword, Devil Sword Leathers, it's also worth mentioning Nurgal, Nurgul, <laughs> an NPC in the Ungoro camp which sells the recipe for Devil Sword Gauntlets on a limited supply basis, so it's worth checking if he has this item or the recipe available whenever you stop by, and if this is available, buy it, you can resell it for a guaranteed profit. On the topic of vendor flips, this is something I should have mentioned in the previous video, but since you're probably going to go to Tanaris quite a few times throughout your Angora journey anyways, I will mention it now. There's an NPC in Tanaris called Pestle Sug, which sells many alchemy recipes, including the Transmute Arcanite recipe. This is not really a limited supply by any means, meaning you can buy 10 of these, and I always make some very easy gold reselling these on the auction house for a profit, because some people either can't be arsed going to Tanaris to get the recipe, or they simply don't know where it's from and they just check the auction house and then buy it for whatever price it's listed for. Do you not underestimate how lazy some people are? It is also worth noting Kia in Winter Spring, which sells the patterns for Runecloth, Runecloth bags, and also Runecloth gloves on a limited supply basis, once again guaranteed profit and free gold by buying them from the vendor if they are available and sell them on the auction house. And you also have Sister in Winter Spring offering engineering recipes. They're definitely worth knowing about if you're questing or grinding in Winter Spring anyway, just stop by, check them out. If they have any recipes available, buy them, resell them, free gold. Going back to farming gold and grinding most for experience, you also have the powerful Mojo farming. In Eastern Plaguelands, a very suitable gold farm for the higher levels. We're talking 57 to level 60, and these are used in a couple of endgame crafts. Farming for the Crusader formula, this one ain't that great for experience but it's very good for gold. You also have the water elementals in Eastern Plaguelands for elemental water and essence of water. These are actually incredible and have been my go-to gold farm for Classic WoW for quite some time. You also have the Fellwood Bears, which I don't really have any other name for but Fellwood Bears, which are incredible for raw gold as they have a very lucrative loot table. This one is also, obviously, like very obviously, 
is going to be even better if you combine it with skinning especially because they can give you something called Warbeard Leathery. Now I can't really talk about level 50 to 60 without showing my personal grinding locations which I used on my Druid in Classic Era when playing hardcore myself. You have the Furbolgs in Fellowood and Winterspring. These you can effectively farm all the way from level 48 to level 60 if you want to, as one of the locations offer, offers mobs at level 48, another one level 53, and Winterspring level 55 and upwards. An added benefit is that the Furbolgs in Fellowood can drop something called the Deadwood Feathers, which can be handed in for even more experience as well as Timber Mahold reputation. The Winter Spring Furbolgs also have a similar item called Spirit Beads, which can also be handed in for additional experience as well as reputation. On top of that, the Furbolgs in Winter Spring can drop Echoes as long as you can have done the pre-quest for Echoes first, giving you even more gold from those Echoes, plus they can also drop Journeyman's Backpacks or even Traveler's Backpacks, aka 14 slot and 16 slot bags, plus an added benefit here is that they drop a lot of endgame potions, health potions, and mana potions. They are incredibly easy to call, like, they're incredibly easy to farm. Just watch out for the then watchers, which will let out a cry at half health, calling for backup, so just pull them away from other mobs, and it's incredibly safe and easy. Now, Timber Maw Hold reputation can be incredibly helpful for a bunch of people. Specifically those of you with enchanting, as you need this reputation to get access to agility enchants, which can help you make gold through having access to exclusive enchants. Plus, Alchemist gets access to the Essence of Earth to Essence of Water recipe, which can actually be pretty profitable. It is also worth noting that if you kept your professions up to date, then Herbalism and Mining will start pulling in some pretty significant amounts of gold, in this level bracket, and here's a mining uh, herbalism farming route for Fellowood, which you can also use for mining. And here you have a mining farming route for Ungoro, which once again can also be done and works with herbalism, though the mining veins are usually closer to the mountains, while the herbs spawns are more in the middle. So focus on whatever you want based on that knowledge. Plus, you also have this mining route in Eastern Platelands, which once again works with herbalism. And farming for herbalism and mining at the same time in Eastern Platelands is actually incredibly profitable. And that's the final installment of Making Gold While Leveling, the video series. Hopefully this video series gave you some examples of how to make gold while leveling, and I'm really hoping it helped you make a significant amount of gold while leveling as well. Let me know if you have any additional gold making strategies to use while leveling in the comments down below, and check out my classic hardcore gold making guide in the video description for even more gold making stuff. And that's pretty much it, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again very soon.